So y'all listen to this petty stuff right here. This I'm sorry, but this shit was petty. So Avatar was recently re-released in China, right? China. <laughs> uh this past Friday and over the weekend it brought in 8.9 million dollars US currency, right? And because of that release that China requested, it has once again become the number one grossing movie in the world, snatching the crown back from Endgame. Now, I don't have a dog in this fight. I didn't see a dime of this money. As a matter of fact, I contributed to both totals probably a few times with Avatar. Because at the time when Avatar was out, it's like if you wanted to go to the movies, there was really nothing playing. It's like, okay, let's play in the movies. Well, Avatar and these other movies. All right, let's go see Avatar again. <laughs> Avatar really was that great to much of the chagrin of other people and what they thought of the story, even myself. But Avatar was an awesome movie. So was Endgame. But the fact that they put it back out and I feel like they did it just so they could snatch the crown back from Marvel. I think that that shit was petty. I mean, come on. Really? Still in the midst of a global pandemic? You want to get your crown back? Really? I mean, Disney and Marvel both. Disney really got the the crown anyway, because Disney not only owns Fox Studios who put out Avatar, but they also own Marvel, who put out Endgame. So either way, Disney wins. I just thought that this was funny and petty, but more funny than anything else. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks. This is Do You Speak Geek? Episode 69. Welcome to the ride, people. This is Do You Speak Geek? I am your host, Nix. Hope you all have been having an amazing week. Happy St. Patty's Day to everybody. And uh, hopefully you guys have been enjoying yourselves. Again, this is the podcast where we bring you the latest and greatest and everything going on in the geek realm. If you join us for the first time, welcome. And if you're an avid listener, welcome back. Hopefully you all are checking us out at Spreaker, Spreaker Spreaker.com. That is the home team. If not Spreaker, you can check us out on other podcast applications such as Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio. We are even on Audible. We're kind of everywhere. So check us out wherever you can. Please be sure to subscribe to the podcast, like the podcast, and leave comments where you can. Do you speak geek.com? The central hub for everything DYSG. We have photos, we have blogs, we have videos. We got a little bit of everything for y'all. Even to let you know what you should be reading as far as comics that week. So please be sure to check that out when you get the opportunity. Do you speak geek.com? Follow us on our social medias Facebook at DYSGFB, Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets, and Instagram at Do You Speak Geek. We've had a amazing time doing the DYSG live interviews. We've recently had an amazing one with the fantastic Frankie. Please be sure to go to do you speak geek IG page and check out that interview. It was amazing with a more amazing person that we spoke with great time. Please be sure to check that out. YouTube, the only place where you can see the Dono and daddy show. Please be sure to go there. Subscribe like Hulk smash that bell for all notifications and leave your comments. We want to know what you guys think. And also we had our review of WandaVision. So hopefully you all saw that as well. And just be sure to subscribe and check out the content. There's more coming on the way. So please be sure to keep an eye peeled for that. Not really a huge story this week, but I just thought this was hilarious. (laughs) So we're going to talk about it. We're going to feature it. Let's do what we do about this time, people. Let's 
Speak Geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. Are you ready? Okay, y'all. This is about Netflix. We all, at some point or another, have shared our account with someone with Netflix. Maybe even Hulu, Disney Plus, HBO Max, other network streaming services. We've all shared an account or we had an account shared with us. However, the big juggernaut Netflix is getting tired of our shit. A new Netflix test may indicate that the streamer will attempt to prevent users from sharing accounts in the future. In the past week, Netflix has introduced a verification system for users across multiple countries that displays a warning, and I quote, if you don't live with the owner of this account, you need your own account to keep watching. Now, the fact that it said that verbatim, that is hella funny. It's, it's, yo, it's like <laughs> saying, yo, if you ain't paying for this, you need to go get your own. <laughs> like, like just, just straight up, like, yo, take your stymie check, <laughs> put like $12 to the side and get your own account. You being garbage right now. That was first reported by Gamma Wire. Now the test allows users to authenticate their account through a text or email or simply press a button on the remote through the streaming service to verify later. It also provides the option of setting up a new account. So those of you who don't have your own account, when that will tell you to get your own, <laughs> you should start your own account right there. Now the prompt will not lock users out at this current state. If they keep clicking verify later, and it really only appears on TV devices. So if you're watching on a tablet or a phone, you probably won't see the notification as of yet. Um, the new test represents a notable shift in Netflix's own attitude toward the practice of password sharing, to which it has historically turned a blind eye to. While it isn't exactly illegal for users to share passwords, it does go against the terms and services listed on the company's website. The company already has lighter password sharing prevention measures in place, limiting the number of devices that can use an account at the same time. However, this is a notable forward reminder of users to get their own streaming services from the streamers official policies. Yo, this is just hilarious. Like, okay. And, and that, like, like, like you said, that's cool. The fact that it's not illegal for us to share. That's fine. It's probably never going to stop. But the fact that they actually have the message, if you don't live with the owner of the account, you need to get your own account. <laughs> Yo, could you imagine <laughs> that you trying to impress somebody like you trying to impress some girl or some guy or whatever? And it's like they come over and they see that message like, mm, you ain't paying for your own Netflix. I'm not giving you my best. <laughs> Yo, or like you're trying to show like a film, like an educational film on Netflix for students and you get that message and the, all the kids see Miss mm, Johnson ain't paying for her own account. <laughs> it's just hilarious that this message is just calling people out for being cheap. And I love it. It's hilarious to me. I don't know about y'all. What do y'all think? <laughs> but this is funny to me. Let's hop into my favorite portion of the show. Source wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the source wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's jump right into it. The pull list this week Mighty Morphin number five. The new Green Ranger's identity has been revealed. Now, for the first time ever, discover their top secret origin and what comes next. This book has been pretty amazing, if I may say so myself. I enjoy Mighty Morphin a little more than Power Rangers, but check it out anyway. Joker number one. This was the source wall pick of the week. Following the events of Infinite Frontier Zero, the Joker is the most wanted man in the world. <laughs> What's new? 
But the clown prince of crime is several steps ahead of law enforcement, and he's on the run overseas. James Gordon, facing retirement, realizes this is the manhunt of his life and the last piece of a storied career. But what mysterious and deadly forces are also in pursuit of the Joker? Now, in his own book here, it does look like he's a pro tag, but it's the Joker. We already know what's up. And in a backstory following the events of the smash hit punchline number one, DC's most controversial new villain navigates the infrastructure of Blackgate Penitentiary. While on the outside, Harper Rowe takes up the mantle of Bluebird to stop her brother from falling under Punchline's influence. Pretty great story. Please check that out when you get a chance. Homesick Pilots number four. The homesick pilots are reunited, but not for long. Who else knows about the ghost? Who is killing for them? What has been crawling out of the VHS machine at night with blood on its rewindable mind? This was a good book, y'all. Please, please read this one. And finally, now this one I was weary of reading only because of what's been leading up to it, but it was actually dope. Children of the Atom number one. When did the X-Men get sidekicks? Don't miss the debut of the greatest teenage superhero team of all time. Bang, bang, shots fired at Teen Titans. They've learned from the best. Now they're ready to be put to the test. But who the heck are these kids? And where do they come from? Guest starring the X-Men. Seriously, this was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. In SourceWall News, DC announces DC Pride Anthology comic and more for Pride Month. Now, DC announced on Thursday of the upcoming DC Pride Anthology comic, a Crush and Lobo comic miniseries, Pride-themed variant comic book covers, and more DC Pride will arrive on June 8th, while Crush and Lobo will launch on the 1st of June. The Pride-themed variant covers will also be released throughout the month of June as well. DC Pride number one is an 80-page anthology featuring LGBTQIA plus characters, from across the DC universe and will include cameos by fan favorites such as Batwoman, Renee Montoya, Alan Scott, Green Lantern, Midnighter, Apollo, Extrano, Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, Constantine, and more. Additionally, Pride number one will include full pages of profiles of DC's LGBTQIA plus characters and the actors who play them from the CW series such as Supergirl and the character Dreamer who's a trans woman superhero and a story written by Nicole, Nicole Maines, who plays Nia now dreamer on Supergirl covers are also amazing as well. Covers with Batman, Harley, Ivy, Superman, Wonder Woman, and more. You can check out these variant covers online at dccomics.com. I'm all with it. I think Marvel is doing something too, but these covers and the fact that they're getting even stories is definitely dope. Please check these out. Come June 1st. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, you couch potatoes and you bingers out there. Powerpuff Girls live action series cast has been announced. This has met some controversy, not controversy really. Some people have said yay, some people have been like nah. So, the live action Powerpuff Girls series at the CW has found its three leads with Chloe Bennett, Dove Cameron, and Yana Peralt playing the super powered sisters. According to Variety, Bennett has been cast as Blossom, Cameron as Bubbles, and Peralt as Buttercup. Bennett and Cameron both previously appeared on ABC's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. together. The live-action Powerpuff Girls series is set years after the events of the children's cartoon. The three Powerpuff Girls are now disillusioned 20-something-year-olds who resent they lost their childhoods to fighting crime and have learned and have to learn to work together again in the face of a new threat. I like it. I can dig it. Let's see what CW does with it. First look at Netflix's Resident Evil animated series. Now, Infinite Darkness got an official teaser image and some new stills for the upcoming film. 
Netflix is bringing fans a brand new CG anime series to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the franchise. With Resident Evil Village coming later this year, it's a big year for the survival horror fans already, and this just adds to the excitement. People who enjoy the Resident Evil 2 remake will be pleased to hear that Nick Apostolos, Apostolos and Stephanie Pancello will be back as Leon S. Kennedy and Claire Redfield in the movie. So this movie will get a big reveal at Anime Japan 2021 as a panel will discuss the project on March 27th. The premise given to us by Netflix in 2006 there were traces of improper access to secret presidential files found in the White House's network. American federal agent Leon S. Kennedy is among the group invited to the White House to investigate this incident, but when the lights suddenly go out, Leon and the SWAT team are forced to take down a horde of mysterious zombies. Meanwhile, Tara Sav, staff member Claire Redfield, encounters a mysterious image drawn by a youth in a country she visited while providing support to refugees. Haunted by this drawing, which appears to be a victim of viral infection, Claire starts her own investigation. You can read more about this online, people. It is going to be an amazing, amazing film, shot anime style. Please check this out. While we're talking about Netflix and anime, let's talk about this banger that's coming up now. Netflix Yasu- Yasuke confirms release date, the first look. Now, as we have all seen, with the uh, steals that Netflix has released a uh, first look at Yusake with a amazing, amazing steal. Netflix began a greater expansion to the world of licensing an original anime last year, and this one is going to be no better with a new series in the works from Cannon Busters creator LaShawn Thomas. The new series is all set to tell the story of a legendary samurai of African descent, Yasuke, with Atlanta and Judas and the Black Messiah star Lakeith Stanfield as the voice behind the titular character. Netflix has confirmed the new anime series to be out later this year in April. Actually, it's April 29th. The series will run for six episodes overall. LaShawn will also be serving as producer and director for the studio MAPPA um, with designs from Takeshi Koti and music composed by Grammy Award nominating artist Flying Lotus. This is going to be fire. I can't wait. <sighs> I think I'm becoming a bigger anime fan now. <laughs> yeah, I think I am. Let's hop into Thumb Life. Peace, love, and video games. That's on my Donkey Kong. That man is playing Galaga. All right, gamers, a lot of Xbox news, so hold your heads. Xbox officially completes its Bethesda acquisition. Microsoft's 7.5 billion acquisition of ZeniMax Media, the parent company of developers like Bethesda, Arcane, ID Software, and more, has been finalized. To celebrate, more Bethesda games will be added to Xbox Game Pass this week, and they already have been. It has also been confirmed that some new Bethesda games will be exclusive to Xbox and PC. In a post of Xbox Wire, head Xbox Phil, Spect- Phil Spencer, almost says Phil Spector, <laughs> Welcome ZeniMax, Bethesda Software, and all their development studios to the Xbox family by saying, now that everything is official, we can begin working together to deliver more great games to everyone. (sighs) I don't know how I feel about this. All I know is they better not make Elder Scrolls Xbox exclusive because I'm not buying an Xbox just to play Elder Scrolls. And my wife isn't either, who's 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 an even bigger fan than me. During a roundtable discussion as well, Xbox Marketing General Manager Aaron Greenberg and Bethesda Global Marketing confirmed that in planning for the new phase that we're including more news to the partnership and no further details were given at the time. They're going to be giving some new exclusive things that will be popping off sometime around the virtual E3 conference. So we'll see what happens there. Also in Xbox news, a lot of unannounced games are still coming for 2021. 
Now, with the already impressive lineup of such games like the Halo game and Psychonauts 2, Xbox Games has a scheduled release for 2021. And speaking on the uh, Iron Lords podcast, S. Ronald, uh, not Ronald, sorry, Jason Ronald said that they're going to be not all games that have been released this year have been announced yet. While not specifying referencing Xbox Game Studios, the remark has sparked speculation about whether Ronald is referring to games coming from Microsoft Studios' own or soon to be own studios like the Bethesda one. So we'll see what happens there. A new TMNT game, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, has been announced for PC and console. It's a four player co op side scrolling brawler. Oh, yeah. Just like the old school arcades back in 91. And it's from the same developers from Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. In this game published by Domitsu, Do- Dotimu, in association with Nickelodeon, it's being developed by Tribute Games. And it's scheduled to come out sometime, I think, later this year. No release date as of yet. After seeing this, I'm definitely excited for it. I got a few friends of mine who are definitely going to be hopping on this day one <laughs> just so we can live out the dreams of hitting the high three, buzz, buzz, whatever. Here we go. <laughs> and finally, Fortnite is getting its first single player story event. Now, players will soon be able to have a new single player story event that acts as a conclusion to the current season of the Battle Royal. When Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 6 launches on the 16th of March, the first thing players will be met with is Zero Crisis Finale. Described as a solo experience by developer Epic, it's a conclusion of Agent Jones' mission that formed the basis of the Season 5 story. Epic promises that the aftermath of this single-player event will reshape reality as we know it. Epic plans to share details on how to watch this in the upcoming days. Oh man, Fortnite is still growing. Who would have thought it would still be around? Just taking everyone's money, even now here in 2021. But it's been an amazing ride for Fortnite and Epic Games. Definitely hats off to you guys for grinding and keeping everyone entertained. So on that note, I am going to get out of here. Thank you all so much for listening. Please, please follow the content, subscribe to the content, like the content. Let your boy know what y'all think about that content. Visit the website, do you speak geek.com. Follow us on our social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check out the YouTube channel, like, and subscribe there as well. As always, people live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?